Friday. Yes, Friday. Friday. Oh, like that. Friday. Yes. It's 9 o'clock at www.radio-obi.com. Yes, it's James D. here for you. We're on Gay Detroit Radio. And uh, why have we got a show for you today? Yes. Not only do we have um, ignorant and stupid politicians, we have some good news. And we have some sort of straightish, straightish news. Because um, you might as well get this one out of the way. Yeah. MasterChef. Uh, MasterChef casting is coming to Detroit. Yay. So all you would-be um, MasterChefs out there. Um, I watched that show. It's with um, Gordon Ramsay, the English guy. And uh, he's a little bit of a shit, but he seems to get results. Um, he had a little sort of um, homophobic rant a few years ago, and he seems to have got over that. And uh, he had his wrist slap, and now he's behaving himself. Well, as far as the gay front is. But, um, yeah, so uh, if you want to try your hand at being a MasterChef, that's coming up. So just I'd go to MasterChef.com and, uh, because you can pre-register online. And then chefs have like three minutes to plate their meals in front of the food judges. So we'll see what happens there. Let's get some more Michiganders, shall we? Because there's been on that a few on the show, and I quite enjoy the show. And uh, I do like those are the kind of reality shows I like. That sort of you know Project Runway, Master Chef, Top Chef, um, you know all the ones with the DIY things. That that to me is like that's reality TV. Other is a little um, tenuous to say the least. But here on the transgender front, we've got actress uh, Bethany Black. She's going to appear in Doctor Who. We'll talk about that later. And also about Ken Paxton from Texas, the Texas Attorney General. He's got himself into hot water, literally. And uh, also, we have an interview. Yes, an interview with the one and only Mr. Patrick Ian Polk. And he's actually the director of the wonderful Blackbird. That's with Monique and Isaiah Washington. And what it is, it's um, about a young man, a 17-year-old boy called Randy. And uh, that's played by a true star. Um, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, Julian Walker introdu uh, introducing him. Monique, oh my God, and Isaiah Washington. What a change about for him. Do you remember, um, was it Grey's Anatomy when he opened his big fat mouth? Well, apparently he's opening it in a different direction now. We shall talk more about that later. Let's have some music, and uh, we'll dedicate this to Blackbird because, uh, let's face it, we all start our lives... Come out of the closet one way or another, and it's a little secretive. So here's Nikki Holland and Secrets. Watch me in the corners, the corners of your eyes. You're dancing here, that's why I came. 
from Nikki Holland and Secrets. We'll play some of her songs another time as well because I really do like it. I'd like to get back on the show as well. Now, Mr. Ken Paxton. Now, he's the Attorney General of um, Texas. And apparently, um, he actually... (sighs) What can I say? Um, (laughs) He was obviously against the... um, right to marry. But now what he's doing is they're actually stopping and try a death certificate. Last year, James Stone Hoskins and James Allen Stone Hoskins were legally married in New Mexico in January. James, terminally ill, died. Uh, his husband, John, has been fighting for the state of Texas to have him listed on James's death certificate as his legal spouse rather than significant other, which it says now. Uh, James' death certificate also lists him as single. 
Uh, the Supreme Court's uh, the Supreme Court's June 16 ruling should have made this very easy for the state of Texas. But thank you to Attorney General John Allen Stone, Hoskins has been embroiled in a very lengthy legal battle. Officials say they have been reviewing the Supreme Court ruling, and they just have decided if it mandates action on their part. And what makes matters more, also, uh, more really, really pressing, uh, John is also terminally ill. He has a terminal liver disease, uh, melanoma, base cell uh, carcinoma, breast disease, heart defect. And uh, he's really, really in dire straits. So he's actually now, John is a former police officer, and he says in filing he's trying to get his estate in order. And I also wish to have the dignity of being listed on my deceased husband's death certificate. Um, I really honestly do not know what is wrong, wrong with these people. What makes them feel that they're so important in life that they have to destroy and create problems for other people? This is just two people who loved each other. And they should afford the same dignity in death as they afford the same dignity in life. Um, Tony and I have been together now around about 25 years. Um, we have like DNRs, uh, which is do not resuscitate on both of us. Uh, when before the marriage came in, we had to have the um, durable power of attorney, um, the healthcare proxy, uh, the living will, uh, the last will and testament. And even then we were not safe. Um, plus, fact like now with uh, the SCOTUS decision making it equal for everyone to get married, we're still having assholes like this attorney general in Texas thinking that he has the right to fuck around with everybody else's life. It's time, America, for all you lawmakers, grow the fuck up. Seriously. Leave other people alone. Get your own affairs in order because your lives are to total shit by the looks of it. And apparently he's going to face um, legal charges as well. Anyway, that's me on that one. Let's have some good news. Um, transgender actress Bethany Black. She's to appear in a Doctor Who. Now, if you remember last year with the new uh, Doctor, um, there was a, like a lesbian kissing scene and uh, the, a lot of the idiots were saying, you know, a lesbian lizard, and it was so totally uncalled for. And it's Doctor Who, for God's sake. It's all make-believe. If you want a lesbian lizard, you can have a lesbian lizard. Please. Get over it. So anyway, this young girl, she, she's going to be on Doctor Who. Uh, so for all you Who fans, uh, Whovians, um, this is going to be a special treat. Everybody is out there. Thank you. And you know what? Good luck to her. Master Chef, all you budding chefs out there. Mmm. It's coming to Detroit. Yay. I'm a cook myself, but um, I'm not in that league. You know, I'm, I'm good with, like, home cooking and that's it. But unfortunately, I live with a guinea who does not like garlic or onions. So anything I cook, unless it's like, um, you know, meat and potatoes, that's it. I have to travel all over the world to meet a guinea, that's Italian, and I can call him a guinea because he's my husband, meet a guinea who does not like garlic or onions. Did I luck out or what? Ah, <sighs> damn, what can I say? <laughs> and also, don't forget today, we've got an exclusive at um, Gay Detroit Radio. Uh, the movie Blackbird, it actually came out uh, last July. And now the, um, the Blu-ray and DVD's out. Uh, that came out on August the 5th. And uh, Blackbird is about a 17-year-old young man. And uh, he's played by Julian Walker. So we're introducing this young man. Um, he's a devout Christian and he's hiding his inner struggle, which is obviously homosexuality. He's got um, a compassionate father, played by Isaiah Washington. Mm, must be really acting there. 
And uh, <laughs> sorry, I say I'm just joking. And um, also, then we've got he plays a compassionate father. Then we've got Monique, who plays this um, rather devout Christian woman, who sounds a little bit on the nutty side. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. This is what's going to be happening with this movie. Very good movie. I've seen the trailer. Um, we're going to be talking to the young man later, Mr. Patrick Ian Polk. And uh, what a nice young man he is. Very talented. He's going to be doing some uh, other projects as well, which we will be talking about in the interview. So we're going to have a little bit of music. And uh, this is for our gay metal fans, because we know you're out there and we don't ignore anyone on Gay Detroit Radio. Everybody gets a piece of cake. Yes, they do. <laughs> so here's the good old Sunday hats. And let's play doctor. metal friends out there it's sunday hats and let's play doctor um after this section we're going to have the interview with patrick ian polk uh about the movie blackbird about a young man who's hiding his homosexuality from a devout christian family compassionate father devout mother monique and isaiah washington and uh, very 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 good movie if it, uh, the trailer's anything to go by. So uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled because uh, this movie's going to be good. So let's get back to some more uh, music. Uh, sorry, not music. Um, news. Now, in Norway, um, I don't know about this, but 
you see, I really don't know about this. Norway plans to allow trans kids as young as seven to change their legal gender. Transgender people uh, in Norway will no longer have to undergo genital surgery and be sterilized when they change their legal gender under a proposed legislation from the Norwegian government. If passed into law, the bill would make Norway one of the most progressive countries in the world when it comes to transgender rights by allowing children as young as seven to assert their gender identity and have that reflect legally, providing their parents agree to it. Uh, children over 16 will be allowed to change their legal gender without parental consent. However, while, chan- excuse me, whilst transgender children will be able to change their gender for legal purposes, they will not be allowed to undergo any kind of surgery related to a sex change before they turn 18, nor will any surgery be compulsory once they become adults. Um... I really don't know because I've never been in this situation. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are going to argue for this and argue against it. Some people are going to say, well, really, do the children know at their age? And some people are going to say, yes, they do. Um, I personally, I, I really don't know on this one because I knew through my own sexuality. Um, I didn't know until round about... 11, 12, when the old sort of hormones started kicking in, that something was different. Um, Not normal, um, but actually, you know, you feel as though you're a freak and something's not quite right because you're not feeling the same things as others. This started to round me about 11, 12, so uh, I didn't know anything else. And I was seven years old. I didn't know. Well, I was too busy kicking a football. Um, so I really, honestly, I have no idea how to to actually answer that one because I'm totally out of my depth on that one. Um, like I said, some people are going to argue for it, some against. Um, I personally don't think, personally for me, um, I don't know if you can decide at that age. Um, then again, it's saying, you know, uh, they will no longer have to undergo genital surgery. I don't understand that either because I thought you, you, if you want to have a gender reassignment, uh, and gender transitioning and be transitioned from male to female, um, female to male, that some sort of, um, surgery will be involved down the line, um, so, I, uh, do you know, on this one, I'm really, really um, a little perplexed because I really don't understand it. And uh, there are people who are going through this who do understand it. So um, if anybody's out there and wants to talk to me about it, please do just contact me at gaydishrightradio at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to talk about it because I find it totally interesting because although I don't know what it's about, it's not wrong. I know people don't understand what I'm about, but I'm not wrong. So, you know, I just, um, mm, I, I, I would like to know more about this one, definitely. Now, <laughs> here we go. The Republicans yet again rear their ugly, nubile, irritable, not just be like, irritable Republican syndrome. Yeah, that's the IRS, isn't it? Irritable Republican syndrome. IRS. Well, apparently, um, after the Supreme Court ruling that brought same-sex marriages to all the 50 states, uh, King, this is a Republican, um, uh, he's a congressman, um, he's actually speaking this week, and he's actually trying to endorse Republican uh, presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee, and Stephen King is a congressman. I'm trying to find out where. Uh, I will find out later. Oh, the Dickinson County News. Well, there had to be a dick in there somewhere, didn't there? Anyway, so apparently he's saying with his bizarre claim that it's a fact of history that children do better in a home with a mum 
and a dad. Well, now he's saying that um, he's actually offering to marry gay people to his lawnmower. Okay, well, actually, if that's uh, it, could ah, do you know what? If the lawnmower is a Zorro, then it could be a gay blade. Yay! Yeah, I know it was bad. What do you expect? Talent? Hello. Okay, and also in Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Now, I don't know if it's satire or not, but it's, it's actually quite an amusing story. Uh, the Alabama DOT Department of Transport is banning homosexuals from highway rest stops. The Alabama governor... Uh, Robert J. Bentley has ordered the state's National Guard leadership to stop gay sex epidemic that has plagued the Alabama's highway rest drops in recent years, citing Alabama's religious freedom law. Okay, so the religious so so the religious people don't have sex in toilets. Mm. For the fear of public safety, homosexual males, women are not mentioned in this amendment. I wonder why. Mm. Are not allowed to access any state-funded highway rest area. Now, let's just get one thing straight on this, shall we? Um, it's not homosexuals who are actually um, doing this and attacking the rest areas. Uh, women obviously know better because... I'm not saying sexity because women clean toilets far more than men do. So obviously they don't want to have sex in a toilet. That's just sort of a, a giving, you know, really ill. But uh, what really is happening is not homosexuals who are frequenting the rest stops. Sorry to put a little bug up your ass about this, Mr. Alabama Governor. It's usually the married men who frequent the rest stops they are looking for men it's married men who are on the down low who go to rest stops to play with other married men it's not homosexuals homosexuals have a wonderful thing called bars they also have a wonderful thing called homes we use them we don't use toilets only to pee and poop but it's the married men looking for other married men who are on the down low and then they get their jollies off in a toilet while their wives are at home cleaning their toilets. Ooh, I did not say that. <laughs> Ooh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, that's um, a nasty subject, but unfortunately, I have to really put it right because the thing is, if you look into like Craigslist and all the men for men section, it is full of married men looking for other men for a quick jack off, blow job, or whatever. They don't kiss and they don't have anal because then it makes them gay. I think I've said it all. Let's have some music. And I'm play one of my songs. And um, this is called Streets of Detroit by James D. You listen to Gay Detroit Radio. And it's Fridays at 9 p.m. on www.radio-ob.com. You can also get us on gayradio.com. Gay Radio Det gay Det sorry, gaydetroitradio.com. Gay Detroit Radio at gmail.com, Gay Detroit Radio at Facebook, Gay Detroit Radio at Twitter. How simple is that? Let's have some Streets of Detroit. I'll be right back. <laughs> Streets 
Yes, and welcome back to Gay Detroit Radio. And as promised, we do have a young man, a very talented young man. Yes, we've got the wonderful uh, director of a new movie called Blackbird. And what he's doing is telling the story of a 17-year-old. And uh, he's a devout Christian, and he's got a hidden secret struggle. And uh, we're going to be talking about that. The director of the film is Patrick Ian Polk, we've got Monique in the film, we've got Isaiah Washington, and also the introduction of Julian Walker. Patrick, welcome to Gay Detroit Radio. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, listen, I've just given a brief synopsis of uh, what the movie is about. So, would you like to fill us in? Because I saw the trailer. The trailer is absolutely awesome, and uh, it's going to be one hell of a movie. So, please... um, Introduce us and let us know what the movie is about. The movie, Blackbird, is uh, based on the book Blackbird by Larry Duplachan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually a book I read as a freshman in college. Um, and it tells the story of this uh, high school kid in a small town in Mississippi who is uh, singing in the church choir, um, uh, uh, very religious, you know, devout. Christian upbringing, mm-hmm. uh, but coming to terms with his, uh, you know, his homosexuality. Mm-hmm. Um, he's having these feelings, and he's trying to pray them away, but of course, that's not working. And then um, how his, his parents, played by Monique and Isaiah, how they respond to uh, his, his journey. Now, the father seems like a typical father, because uh, I'll give you a brief synopsis of mine, um, is that um, I'm a, a white Catholic boy from England, and it's a completely different situation of what um, this young man is going through here, Randy. 
But it, it all boils down to the same thing, whereas if you come from a religious family, you've got this very stout father and a very sort of um, unforgiving mother. And uh, this seems to what's happening. So um, the father was played by Isaiah Washington. Um, is he... Is he is he actually was praying the, the 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 stereotypical father who thinks it's an attack on his masculinity? No, actually, it's uh, it's quite the opposite. Uh, in the film, Isaiah's character is really just trying to understand his son, trying to be a part of his son's life, uh, trying to help guide Randy into manhood mm-hmm. um, without dictating what that means for him, trying to make sure that Randy uh, decides for himself what it means to be a man. So it's actually quite a, an unexpected kind of role, uh, especially to be a black father. Yeah, I was, uh, I was going way. to ask that as well, because it's like one of those taboo subjects, you know, like uh, whites asking blacks, uh, you know, well, what is it like to be gay in the black world? And a lot of people are frightened to ask that, but I'm not because, you know, there's a stereotypical world in which it's like, most males who are the fathers of homosexual people. Excuse me one minute. The phone never rings until I put this microphone on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, the stereotypical father, where as, as in like mine, um, I very devout Christian, but yet um, sort of did wander himself on many directions with other women, but yet was very, when it came down to homosexuality, it was like really, really an attack on his masculinity. But yet now I found with Monique, who was playing the mother, she seems to be the harder influence and taking more of it's an affront to God. Is that the case? Yeah, I think sometimes uh, often religion is, a determining factor in terms of how parents react to having, you know, gay children. Um, that's what a lot of people point to in their objections. Mm-hmm. And what I hope Blackbird, a film like Blackbird does, is, is humanize the issue for people. Yeah. Take it away from, that, from, from the religious doctrine and, and make it more about human beings, mm. people, families, sons and daughters and loved ones, you know. But is it more difficult for black, uh, young black males coming out in, in their environment than it is young white males? Because a lot of people are still interested and curious about that. It's not that I'm trying to sec- sectionalize everything, but it's it sort of, people are just wondered, it, it, it seems to be a lot more difficult with um, a black child than it is a white child. It, does that make sense to you? You know, I think that there is that perception, but I don't think it's a realistic one. Hmm. Um, I don't really think it's any more, any harder for a black uh, person to come out than a white person. I really don't. I think that, um, I think it, it just depends. I think it's hard for some, not as hard for others. I hope that it's getting easier for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, um, it wasn't that I was trying again, to. It wasn't that I was trying to sectionalize it. It's just that a lot of people are really curious because people sort of think like as though they've got tunnel vision. So I like to ask the questions that nobody else will ask because <laughs> I'm me, and it's just like, well, okay, then at least people then learn from other people's experiences. Sure. So what made you actually think about, um, what, what made you come into this movie? Because it's, it's actually still quite a hot topic, especially for young males to come out. Well, as I said earlier, you know, the book really um, was an important uh, moment for me as a young black gay man. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I felt like we needed to see a coming-of-age story told from a black gay point of view. And, and I think now more than ever, it's very timely. Um, you know, gay marriage having just passed, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's forcing everyone to have those conversations. And so I think, like I said, hopefully more and more people will will come out and be feel comfortable coming out um, and will be sort of moved more towards uh, more general acceptance and uh, less people living in the closet or feeling like they can't be their, yeah, well, their true selves. Well, unfortunately, you, uh, you know yourself, I mean... Um... 
uh, there's a lot of suicides because of misunderstandings and downright bigotry on, on a lot of parts, and that's not going to get e any easier at the moment. But it does seem to appear that a lot of people are getting more support. Um, do you think actually movies like this will help people come out more? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I've been doing gay-themed work for 15 years, and I have people now, you know, young men in their 20s, who tell me when they were a teenager, they watched my TV series, Noah Dark, which mm -hmm. a, a gay male, a gay yeah, cast, yeah. a gay black cast, yeah. and how that helped them come to terms with, with their sexuality. So I've seen the proof that popular culture has the power to influence young minds. It has the power to help people. Uh, accept themselves, figure out who they are, because when you see yourself on screen, when you see a character that reminds you of yourself, mm -hmm. that that can be some an important moment. I think it's important for everyone to see that. So yeah. hopefully, a film like Blackbird is, can be a part of actually, that. Actually, that's a very very good um, point of view. You know, if you can actually identify yourself with a person on the TV. Unfortunately, um, in a lot of cases. Um, they still seem to sort of um, caricature the gay guy as the effeminate male and very flamboyant. Uh, I see in your movie you're not doing that, which I'm really happy about. You're just playing it as a young, normal, normal, which is the word I want to use many times. We're just a young, normal male who's trying to come to terms with his sexuality, which you appear to be doing extremely well. I saw in the trailer... Um, the acting looks to be superb, and I would love to see the movie. Um, how can people get the movie? Because now it's on DVD, I do believe. Yes, people can order the film on DVD or Blu-ray. They can watch the film anywhere. Uh, movies stream digitally, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, um, video on demand on your, on your cable systems, whether it's Time Warner or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much everywhere you everywhere you see movies, everywhere you rent movies or download movies, it is available. Sweet. You have to go, go check it out. Well, actually, um, also, what, uh, do you have a new, a new project you're working on? Because if it's anything like this one, it's got to be good. Um, so I'm prepping another film that I'll shoot this fall in Atlanta, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. Well, Patrick, an absolute joy talking to you. Um, I really, honestly, I can only wish you the best of luck because from what I've seen, I'm extremely impressed. Uh, you've got one hell of a cast, um, and uh, I just really, really am looking forward to seeing it and uh, hoping to see future projects from you. If anybody wants to get in touch with you um, at any time and ask questions, do you have an email or a website for them? Sure. Um, the best thing is, is social media. You can always find me there. I'm on the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook. It's just my name, Patrick Ian Pope. I'm very easy to find. Patrick, absolutely wonderful. Thank you ever so much for taking time. Uh, an absolute joy talking to you. And uh, hopefully I will be interviewing you yet again on another new project in the future. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. You have a great day now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the wonderful sound there of Patrick Ian Polk. You've got to go see this movie because uh, from what I've seen in the trailer, it's wonderful. It's called Blackbird. And you go to www.blackbirdthemovie.com. And what it does, it tells the story of a 17-year-old Randy who is played by Julian Walker, and he's a devout Christian, and he's hiding a secret, and the inner struggle of coming to terms with his homosexuality. His father seems to be a compassionate father, and his mother, a very, very disturbing <laughs> religious woman. So uh, please keep this movie in mind, and look for the movie, because I definitely am going to watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James D, and I'll be right back after the break.
limited time We notice the complacency Of a world too blind to see That fierce distraction numbs us From a birthright of equality We're sounding out the call A call for justice For all there's just us to do it Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on Fast approaching our last section of the show, and as always, it just goes by way too quick. That's Joy's prayer there, and uh, that's it from the movie um, Move On, March On, sorry. All right, lots of news. Now, this, actually, I found quite amusing. There's, um, there was a violent homophobic uh, homophobe. Um, he picked, actually, on a married couple, and he lost... Um, mainly because <laughs> the idiot picked on a couple, uh, the first couple to get married at West Point. And you know that West Point is for the cadets, military cadets. He got his ass kicked. <laughs> ah. Yes, the first couple to marry at West Point were in a Manhattan bodega. Uh, in the upscale neighborhood of Soho on Sunday. Uh, when one of them was physically attacked by a man, they say that threw the first punch. Uh, it's hard to believe that in 2015 we still have to deal with anti-gay hate crimes in Soho of all places. But that's what happened that day. 
uh, an unidentified man of about 40 years of age screamed anti-gay obscenities at the couple, then punched Larry's husband, Daniel Lennox Schwedt, in the face. Uh, the guy who screamed anti-gay obscenities at us in the bodega for sucker punching Danny. Um, he left covered in his own blood with his team between his legs after he actually handled the situation. Now, you see, unfortunately, um, this is what's going to happen now. Um, I do not condone violence in any way, shape or form. And I'm fed up of these homophobes screaming obscenities and thinking that gay guys now can just stand quivering in a corner screaming for mercy. That does not happen anymore. Uh, my spouse and I, Tony, have been in quite a few altercations and won. We fight back now, and we kick your asses. We put a new term to queer bashing. We fuck you. Simple as that. You're not going to take us down anymore. So please, all you homophobes out there, grow up, please. We're not taking it. St we're just not taking it lying down anymore. Like I said, I don't particularly like violence, but you are not going to fuck with me or my spouse. Same as these two couple either. And that's going to happen a lot more. So you homophobes better start growing up. Or start working out. Because we'll kick your ass. Kevin Bacon. Now then. Uh, Mr. Kevin Bacon. Um, actor Kevin Bacon is taking uh, Hollywood to task for the gender gap on on-screen nudity. Uh, in a new video posted last Tuesday, uh, the man who's only six degrees away from any Hollywood star demanded that the entertainment is industry let actors free their bacon. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Which means he wants them to show their wiener balls and butts. Well, I'm all for that. Definitely. I mean, let's let's bring it on. <laughs> mm. And also, this really is just so totally, totally, totally ridiculous. <laughs> Them damn Mormons are at it again. Yes. Now, apparently, Mormon parents are fearing that a bouncy hot dog inflatable, a hot dog inflatable toy, will turn their son, gay. Um, prepare to see a toy on the things that made me gay listed on t in 20 years. This is like, um, this is like an innocent and hilarious uh, children's bouncy toy. What it is, one of those air toys that you bounce up and down on and it's in the shape of a hot dog and it's inflatable, and apparently a self-described ex-Mormon uncle shared a story on Reddit saying that his sister and brother-in-law accused him of pushing a gay agenda by purchasing their seven-year-old, uh, the man's nephew, an inflatable hot dog bouncy toy. Now, I've seen a picture of this hot dog, the little wiener hot dog. That is not going to turn the sun gay. However, the outfit is debatable. <laughs> ah, dear, I'm going to hell. Going to hell. And then Stonewall, talking about another one. Stonewall is actually now the movie. Um, that's dropped its first trailer, so look out for that. Around. Facebook, whatever that was. And um, I hate when that does. It's one of those silly, bloody um, things. You know, those promo things on the websites. Anyway, so uh, don't forget to get some Stonewall movie. You can actually see the trailer online if you want. Let's have some music, and then I'm going to close down the show. I'm James D., and you're listening to Gay Detroit Radio on www.radio-op.com.
life had just begun. Zipped up his boots and ran out the door, jacket in his arms, looked at the stars, jumped in the car as he said goodnight, put into drive as he drove out of sight, radio blared, gel in his hair, ready for the night the boy prepared. Pulled up to greet the club on spot, parked as he ran from the parking lot, ID out, he was feeling free, ready to move in the dark with his drink, enter the bar with a sense of joy, nothing could stop this boy from the love of the beat and the shuffle of the feet. He stopped as he looked at the crowd and he said, Music it moves me, music it suits me, brings me to life. Music it kills me, music it thrills me, all through the night. Sound from the catwalk, pop from the bed drop, lord of the dance floor, fire in the disco. Give me a sign that you feel me, you see me, you hear me. Dancing my life away Ashley was 23 Wanted nothing more than to dance to the beat She had her sneakers on Hands in the air Strutting up and down those stairs Shot after shot she was feeling free Let the music move her feet Moving that ass Shaking fast Making the boys say damn as she passed Didn't give a fuck about the hate Dancing through the night to clean that slate Stars in her eyes Smile on wide Looking for a message in the sky Feeling so good as she dropped the step And never stopped once just to catch a breath Didn't wanna worry, didn't wanna fight This was a night to make it right Pulled into a boy as she kissed his lips Wrapped her arms around as he gripped her hips Tension grew hot from between the two He whispered in her ear, his I love you Her heart beat fast, she began to twirl Then the kiss this girl from the love of the beat And the shuffle of the feet She stopped as he looked in the eyes and she said Music it moves me, music it suits me Brings me to life it kills me, it music it thrills me all through the night. Stop in the catwalk, pop from the backdrop, board of the dance floor, fire in the disco. Give me a sign that you feel me, you see me, you hear me. Dancing my life away. Up as you turn it up, put your hands high if you feel the touch. Don't control it, feel the soul, and don't hold back, just let it go. Let the music move you deep inside, let the music give you a sense of pride. Tonight's the night, it feels so right. So bring it to the chorus one more time. Music, it moves me, music, it soothes me, brings me to life. Well, that's right this week, so same bad time, same bad place, so uh, I do hope you've enjoyed your show. Uh, please do check out Blackbird the movie, and also Stonewall the movie. Also the songs, we're here every Friday at 9pm at www.radio. Dash com, And if you miss the show, you can get us on GayDetroitRadio.com. So I'm James D. signing off for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Bye now. Gay